Well, glory. I'm glad you all made it here this morning. I don't know where the rest of them are at, but I pray to be to get them in Jesus' name. And if they can't enjoy whatever they're doing, that they're putting before the things of God, if they're sick, I pray you raise them up and bring them here. But Lord, we're just, time is short and we don't want to see anyone <laughs> perish, so Lord, do whatever it takes to shake and rattle their tree in Jesus' name. Where you go now, you know I pray for you. You end up uh, you're being a bad boy or girl. I need that love. Amen. Amen. As Sister Becky was, boy, Deacon was fired up this morning. I'm like, Lord, I want to preach that message. <laughs> Amen. That's what I want to preach. Ooh, something happened to my story. It's all the same. Well, that happened to us. Huh? I did. It's fine. Lord. <laughs> that is better. I don't feel like a rocker. I went to a meeting here a while back, not too long ago, because they went out much. And the only chair I picked in the place was the one that had the leg miss on the side of the second mile. So the whole meeting. <laughs> My core got quite a work. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible also says that God gives seed to the sower. sower. And, uh, you know, now, if he gave you the seed, whose seed is it? Yes. You know how many times people want to tell God what to do with his seed? Mm -hmm. And he said, and how many know he doesn't give it to the one that says, God, if you'll give me seed, then I'll sow. Right. He gives it to the ones that's already sowed. Right. Right. You will never have enough seed to sow until you start sowing. It's right. biblical kingdom principles. Everybody says, when I have enough, I'll tithe. You'll never have enough. You'll starve. You will be in the spirit of poverty forever right. until you learn to tithe and put God first in all things. Amen. And we're going to talk about putting first in all things, not just finances this morning. Right. But until you learn to put him first, you will never get to reap those things. And once you do start reaping them, you do have a devourer that comes. But, you know, he doesn't always come in ways you can see. Right. The Bible says that he'll, he'll he'll stop him from cursing your seed. You know, also, you know what? Sometimes you need help from you cursing your seed. <laughs> you you sow in good seed, you do things all the right way, and the enemy of your soul comes to corrupt your spirit, to right. corrupt the very seeds you've been sowing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little, and he'll work overtime. He'll just, Aww. especially if you've got a big harvest coming in. He wants Amen. to do his best. And as pastor, it breaks my heart to see people get, get their seed cursed. The right. things that they've been sowing into. Yeah. You know? And and then, you know, you can usually tell before you're a big harvest because the enemy's going, you know, just screaming in your head. And, uh, but, uh, so, today, the title of today's message is, uh, let's have a heart check. And, uh, Lord, wherever the rest of them are at, I pray the Holy Spirit gets them too. Do you guys realize, I looked around this morning, and if I didn't see what was coming in the future, to be honest, I would be very disheartened. And uh, I don't even know where most people are. My phone's blowing up now. Probably somebody's <laughs> wanting to know, me know where they are. I'll see it. But we're let's wait till later. But if you knew what was coming, you would probably sow different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here's here's where we're at as a church. I'm going to speak to you prophetically this morning for those that are here. So those that have an ear to hear, listen to what your pastor is saying this morning because I've wrestled with God long enough and I'm going to give this word this morning. Not everybody is going to get the. We're about to have a move of God like you've oh. never seen before in Broken Chains Church. Amen. We're about to have an outpouring like you've never seen. God showed it to me plain. I've been speaking on it for the last month or so now. Amen. How many's heard me? Yeah. And, but, do you know not everybody got to go into the promised land? Right. Right. There was ones that had stuff in their heart they were grumbling and complaining i see the bees found one of them and uh they had grumbling and complaining and things and they wanted to go back the way that things were 
How many know your? How many know the things that you're comfortable with that you can control? There, we all like comfort food. We like things that are comfortable. We like things we can control. But none of the when you're when you're a pioneer, you know, I'm gonna kind of got Holy Spirit throwing different stuff in this morning. You know, I'm so thankful God didn't call me to be a museum keeper. Right. And there's some people that are museum keepers. A great church, great thing, and they had it, and they keep it, maintain it, trying to get them to heaven. But God's called me to be a pioneer. I, I don't just sit. I can't just sit by. There's things that the kingdom of God He wants to birth upon this land. Amen. How many know the children of Israel were pioneers, and they could have got there in seven days, and it took them forty oh, years. Yeah. Right. Because they why? Because they couldn't get their hearts, hearts right. 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 Yep. Now we are going into this next thing. My question to you is past this morning as I start to present this. Are you going with us? Yes. Because there's some things you're going to have to check and some things you may want to look at that you really don't want to look at that's going to help you get to where we're going. Yeah. Now, I want to put a few precepts on this as I, before as I start to present what God has gave to me. Uh, number one, God judges the intentions of your heart. But you want to know something that breaks this pastor's heart? You can tell yourself and everybody else your reasonings. Me and God know the truth. And I choose to always love you anyways. But if you're going to if you're going to get to that place, you've got to ask yourself honestly. Because see, we're going to have, and it's not about the work, but here we're going to have all kinds of work coming forward that everybody can do. I'm trying not to even look at anybody this morning so nobody can say. And you can sit down you can do whatever and you'll always find a reason not to but how can god trust you with the second part that's coming if you can't even be found faithful in a little right right and but every so but here's the thing i know guess what not everybody's going to make it to every time we have something but here's the other part don't be a fool and don't think i am or god is either we know why you really didn't no matter what you tell yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I saying this? Because I've been your pastor for over a decade, and we're about to we're on the precept of the greatest move of God we've been contending for for over a decade. And I want to see you with us. Right. I'm not up here trying to spank somebody. Are you hearing my heart this morning, as pastor? Yeah. And I got tons of scripture on this, but I mean, we're about to have some phenomenal things. And some stuff God's been trying to work on some of y'all for a long time. And you've just been kicking against the ghost. Y'all know what that means? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, ouch, that hurts, but I'm going to have been doing this way this long. I'm going to keep trying to get it. What I want going on this path. And guess what? You've never got what you wanted. You just kept trying to go on that path. Anybody found that what something that to be true? Yes. And so, and that can that's not just sin. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of good plans, but I mean, not all good plans are God's plans. Yes. And uh, I'm going to talk some more about some things on that here in a little bit. And. Uh, for even things that you can find in the Word, that doesn't mean what God wants. How I many know that uh, we have funny saying, you, don't, you can't choose your family, right? You know, but then, then again, not all family is, acts like family either. But, uh, you know, in America, people have decided they can choose their church family, and they pick the ones that feed their flesh the best. And most people probably wouldn't pick broken chains because we don't have the flashiest stuff and we're growing, we're going to be doing exceptional things. But I mean, when God puts you in the places that you need to Amen. mature and grow you up to where he wants you to go. Amen. Amen. And it's never about feeding your flesh. Right. Sometimes it's actually very uncomfortable. Right. Good families like sandpaper. <laughs> some of them are like a polishing stone i'm going to get to the word you know but this morning what today is and uh hear my heart in this because i've seen people do this out of anger and things and i'm not talking about it. have you ever had somebody and you're stuck in tight traffic and they're riding your butt so close i'm not talking about the one just a little bit they're riding so close that it's physically dangerous for you and your family and all those things 
Now, when I was a younger man, I would do a brake check, but I would lock it up and then hammer it, and then they'd have to lock it up. And guess what it did? It endangered that other person just as much as it endangered me on the other hand. Now that I'm older, there is still something that I do, and I maintain my exact speed, I keep on the gas, and I just lightly touch that pedal so the brake light will come on and nothing will happen. And you know what, about two or three times, that brake check, they start to examine themselves, and they realize, you know what, I'm so close, I'm endangering myself. And you know what they do? They back off. Mm -hmm. This morning at Broken Chains Church, we're having a brake check or a heart check. I'm gonna flash some lights, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to let you see where you're at. Amen. I keep ringing a little. And uh, why, why am I doing this? Because I want you to go with us. Now, like I said, I'm not up here trying to twist, pervert the word. I really, I really wrestle with God because that's not who I am. And I'm not here to beat you into doing something and guilt you. If, you guilt, if, I, if I guilt you into doing something... It's not worth any more than if you did it with the wrong heart. But the truth is, though, as your pastor, I love each one of you, and I want you to come along where God is taking us. And I really feel like I heard the Father's heart, and he said, give them a heart check, and even those that are online, uh, because you're not going to have time to get ready. This may be the last Sunday we're in this building. But it's coming very soon and as we as we trench forward over the next few months things are going to expedite very quickly I, i've just i've seen it and we're just going to, going to blow up and all the things we've been preparing for for years are going to come in but right now not, i can tell you not everybody's ready for that and the hearts aren't ready and i don't have time to preach a six-week sermon and encourage you and lay hands on you every week to get you there Bible says, well, I get take you to scripture. If you judge yourself, you won't be judged. So this morning, I'm holding up the brakes. I'm going, your heart's up in your chest now. You're hearing the Lord. And you're going to, you're going to examine yourself as we go through some of this. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Amen. Amen. Y'all know I still love you? Well, like I said, I know not everybody's going to make everything. But also don't think me and God's fooled with your phony baloney excuses either. And here's the other thing that I know I'm probably going to have to call you out on it as we move forward. And you're probably not going to be happy with me when I do if you continue to go that route. Why am I going to do that? Because I'm going to try to wake you up because I don't want you to miss <coughs> what God has for you and has for this church. Amen. Now, here's the other thing that I know. We are a corporate body. Not only is enemy trying to deter you, you are part of Broken Change Church. And he wants to stop the move of God that's coming. Mm -hmm. And he's not just hindering you. He's using you to hinder the whole body if you don't get your heart right. Do you know how many times God's told me there's going to be a move of God here and we get into the middle of it and then somebody, several different people get their heart all jacked up and it squashes it like a bug? I can't tell you how many times I've wept because I know what God's had intended for you and the enemy is derailed. Now, I'm not giving glory to the enemy, amen? And I spent a ton of time in the Word, and I gave you all kinds of tools, and we're to a place where I believe everybody in here is more than an overcomer. I don't care if you're a baby Christian or that. I believe you can walk this thing out. It simply means, though, that you have to keep your heart right. You have to be honest with yourself. Amen. You know? Amen. Do you think everybody that shows up to take care of things feels like doing that? Like yesterday, I spent all day going through paperwork. I'd rather have my toenails pulled oh. out and held upside down and beaten than deal with more paperwork. I got I got six more drawers to go through. And so we and we, for the government, we gotta keep stuff for years. And I gotta figure out which year I can keep, which is insane. Amen. So you ready to look at the word this morning? Does everybody care hear my heart? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So our job is to see God's kingdom come upon this earth. How many get excited when you think about that? Amen. Amen. But how many know for that to happen, Jesus has to be Lord of your life. And everybody says, he's Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He's my king. But I got to do this, this, and this. 
There's several verses we're going to look at where he goes and tells them, let the dead bury their dead. And most people think that's very callous. But the truth is, he said, listen, here's the thing. He also said, those that mourn shall be comforted. Mm -hmm. He's not telling you to choose over, but he is telling you to always choose him first. Right, man. Right. And in America, that hasn't happened in a very long time. We've tried to build that here, but I'm telling you, moving forward, you need to ask yourself, am I choosing Jesus first? Am I choosing his kingdom first? So I'm saying, well, I got to take care of my family. I got to. If you will take, put Jesus first. He will take care of your family. He will. Amen. I'm not telling you that, that to them they'll neglect your family, but I'm telling you, if you put Him first. He'll take care of your family. He'll take care of everything you need. Well, I used to say, well, God, I don't have enough. I, I, and the enemy tried to get me to say, years ago, I don't have enough time, God. There's not enough time to do something with the family and do this. But I can tell you, as I put him first, the same way he stretched your ties and offerings and you are, he stretched yes. your time. But yes. if you're stingy with your time yes. and you don't put God first, you'll never have enough time and you'll just be wasting it the same way you used to see your money wasted. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And do you know what happens after you sow a really big seed? The enemy tries to come along and get you nine million ways jacked up because he doesn't want you to receive that that harvest from right, anything. Right. Amen. And so you have to be triple diligent as you're going forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And how how is where is the battleground of all this place in your heart? Right. Amen. Yeah. My heart, your heart, our heart is the church. I mean, come on, we should be you know, and when we're starting to get there. We have, you know, a building that's worth three times what we paid for it. It's paid in full. It's ours. And, you know, we got like 40 people here this morning with children, maybe, or something. I don't know. I don't really know the number. So I have to tell them sometime. But either way, we're not at our biggest point we've ever been. Right. By any means. But God looked at our heart and see, sees that we're ready. Yeah. I'm telling you, the enemy plans to come in and stir strife and discord. And, and, and you can get you to put everything first but the house of God and to give a bunch of baloney stuff. And from this day forward, I'm not going to be able to let you get by with that right. certain right. stuff that I, I've walked in love with and let you get by. I'm going to have to say, well, that's full of baloney. And you're probably, then you're going to be offended. Try to, the enemy's going to give you the opportunity to be offended with me. Or, or, but here's the deal. I'm preaching this message this morning. So that you can start applying the word that you've been taught and say, you know what, my heart's not really right about that. Right. Yeah. Now, am I saying God wants you to work like a dog and work 16? Mm -hmm. That is not what I'm saying. I've done said you're probably not going to make every time. But the thing I'm asking you is examine your heart. That's what God's looking at. And the hard part is, I'm telling you once again, is that me and the Lord, we already know your heart. And, and I, I, I've loved you anyways. You can say, Whatever you want, you know. And some of you all, if, if I'm quiet or something, you're like, well, he knows. But that's all right. I'm, I ain't got time for it. I'm saying it. We can't afford that going forward. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Now, will it always be at this level? No, but we are on the precept of entering into the, the into the promises of God that we've contended for for years. Amen. We are on the precepts of glory like you've never Amen. seen. Amen. It's not the same fight. It's not the same thing. We are about to go places nobody here has ever been, and myself included. Right. Amen. So now we're about to cross over the River Jordan. You can make a monument, but we ain't coming back and don't be going back looking for leeks and garlics or someplace else. Right, man. You got to keep your eyes on what God is doing ahead. Right. And making sure that, you know, because listen, when God gave us a building without making us a way to get things done that we need done, yep. but for you praying for somebody else to do the all, all, all the work is hypocrisy. Right. <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't pray for help. Are you here? Listen. Yeah. I'm talking about things that are real. These aren't imaginary things I'm bringing up. I'm squashing the enemy's plans right now. I hope you're hearing this, Pastor's heart. Right. But you can only have one king. How do you keep your heart right? You have one king. Now, when you have a king, he doesn't. You don't tell him what to do. He tells you what to do. Right. 
And how many know he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you. We're to the point where he's about to add some things. We got to make sure we're still seeking his kingdom first right. in everything. Right. Amen. But you know what? Unfortunately, I see a lot of people, they seek their plans in his kingdom. I don't get to tell him his plans. Right. We joke about it. Illinois was never part of my plans, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that I was called here. I'm thankful for you all. I don't like anything about Illinois but you all. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Here's the thing that ought to come for you. That's enough to cause me to stay here. I want you to hear my heart this morning. That's enough to cause me to stay here. Why? Because it's not my plans, it's his plans. And he had plans for this place. So we're small. We don't have, I look around, I, I'm like, I don't know how it's all going to happen. But I know that if we'll keep our hearts right, we'll all seek his kingdom. We'll all choose to put him first. Every day we wake up and we choose to fight all the junk. The enemy is going to give you five million excuses why you can't do something. Mm -hmm. And if you keep taking the bait, it's going to affect all of us. Yes. And then I'm going to have to say, what are you doing? Yes. <laughs> and then you're going to be tempted to be offended with me. And the enemy's going to try to then sever 10 years of pastorship. Right. Right. Are you got, and I'm not talking, listen, I'm not one that comes, I'm not talking about me beating on you. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. And like I said already, I'm not talking about if the first time you miss one. Listen, if you, you know, if your kid's got a football game or, or you've had this family reunion plan for the last year, I'm not asking you to cancel it. If you've got to work, guess what? A man don't work, he don't eat. Right, right, right. Are, are you hearing the Father's heart this morning? Amen. Good stuff. So, let's turn to Luke chapter 9, verse 62. This is going much better than I thought it would go when the Lord told me I had to do this. That or you all are really good at playing poker. <laughs> Nine sixty-two. Nine sixty-two. We're going to start the uh, verse fifty-six for now. Verse fifty-six. Verse fifty-six. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives. I know He didn't come to make your life hectic. But sometimes when you start really learning to seek the kingdom of God, the enemy tries to convince you that God is disrupting all your life mm -hmm. and making a mess out of it. Mm -hmm. Come on. So seek ye first the kingdom. Oh, that's up there, sir. So he says he's come. He didn't come to destroy, but to what save them. Then he went to another village and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said to them, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. You know how many people have said that to the Lord? I've said it, you've said it, everybody said it. But listen, the proof's in the pudding. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, if it's not costing you something, right. then it's probably your idea, not God's. Right, right. Amen. Glory. And so, <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not nowhere to lay his head. Now, didn't Jesus say in another verse that, that, that just as he takes care of the birds of the air, he'll take care of you? So God's not telling you he wants you to be a vagabond and just walks around on the streets homeless, is he? I'm not saying he can't use some of them. I'm just saying that's not what he's telling you to be, right? But he is telling you if you spend all your time and energy trying to build these things upon the earth, you're missing the whole point of his kingdom. Right. Yeah. And how many know in America, the American dream is to own your home, you know, have two kids, a boy and a girl, a nice car, you know, and whatever else in the back. Let me tell you, the American dream is not the kingdom dream. Right. And if the American dream could satisfy people, we would have a very happy nation. Have you looked around lately? Right. <laughs> They're not happy. Right. No. Right. Because the only thing that can make them happy is the kingdom of God. Amen. Then he said unto them, 
follow me. When you follow on somebody, do you get to go up there and say, wait a minute, I think you made a wrong turn. I don't like this neighborhood. <laughs> Let's go over here. Well, this is not how I seen. I feel like I'm called to go over there. I, I wanted to be an evangelist. I want to blow in, blow up, and blow out. <laughs> Woo, glory! I don't think I'll still get to do some of that. Amen. Years coming. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Let's let's not be ignorant. Let me not be ignorant. There's no denying he gave me a pastor's heart. You know, I can say what I want, but you have to be able to love people at their worst. You have to love people when they're when you know when you can look at somebody's heart and you see the intentions. Only a pastor can look at people and still love them. And they're, you know, because what? Guess what? We're all human. These are all things. The things that the enemy is going to try to tempt you with, most of them aren't going to be new things. Some of them will even be old things. Right. But this morning, I, I want you to be prepared. The Bible says that he'll show us the plans of the enemy. I'm not up here saying prophesy. It's going to be just, I'm up here saying, come on. Get your game face on. Right, right. Yeah. Guard your heart. This is a break check. Right. Let's go strongly over into the promised land. Right. Strongly. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. So he said, follow me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, follow me. Follow, follow me. me. <laughs> and Jesus said to them, let the dead bury their dead. Man, when I was a young minister, this verse really tripped me up. I'm like, he don't even want me to bury my dead. I don't know if I can serve like that, God. Anybody else ever thought like that? I don't know if I can serve at that level. By the way, I got news for you. If you think just coming to church is work, you ain't even halfway prepared for the little bit of ministry we got coming. Right, right. Amen. But he said, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach what? The kingdom of, the God. Kingdom of God. What are we to be? We're to be bringing kingdom from heaven to earth. We can only do that when we're a pure vessel that's letting him flow through us. Right? Right. So, but how many know that if you'll seek him, he'll take care of you? He said that for those that mourn shall be comforted. How? Because he's sending the comforter that's coming from the kingdom in heaven. It's came from the kingdom of heaven. It is now upon the earth. Y'all still with me? Yeah. And Jesus said, Lord, I will follow. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid farewell, which are at my house. Let me just go tell my family about. I mean, these sound like reasonable requests, don't they? But when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I miss my family every day mm -hmm. down home. But I know I'm where he called me to be. And guess what? He's taking better care of my family down there than I could. Right. Why? Because I'm seeking first the kingdom. Now, does he want me not to have no contact with him? Absolutely not. That's not true. But did you know the Moravians, Moravians, M-O-R-I-A-V-I-A-N-S, they were a group of people that got radically saved. And they sold themselves into slavery to get free passage on ships to go to other countries. And they won millions to the Lord. I want you to just take that little concept into what our idea of kingdom building is like today. Yeah. There's martyrs all throughout the ages that were killed and all those things. Why? Because they sought to put the kingdom. Is God calling you to lay your life out and somebody boil you in oil? No. Is he calling you to sell yourself as a slave right now? I don't really think so. If you think that, we probably need to have a talk to make sure it's God talking and not pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but what, how, the difference is in the heart condition right, right. would you be willing to right. or would you have all kinds of stuff when when I talk about that does stuff jump up you know if we said we need a nursery worker would you say well I'm not called for that <laughs> well you're not doing nothing anyway so you kind of might ought to help <laughs> So 
I did warn you before we started. I can't talk like this probably after today. Are you hearing me? I'm going to have to have you in the office. We'll have to have a one-on-one. No, none of you want to come in my office for that. I don't want you to come in there for that. Well, we're going to have a whole bunch of new folk, and they ain't going to be mature enough to hear this level of stuff. Are y'all hearing me this morning? So then he said, uh, we're going to get, this is the main verse here for this one, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, somebody say, No man. No, no man. man. Having put his hand to the plow. You can say that, having put his hand to the plow. And looking back, it's fit for the kingdom of God. Do you realize how strong the words those are? If you start doing what God's called you to do and then you get your eyes off of it and go looking back to what once was or what you thought you were supposed to be doing or what this was over here, God says you're not fit for the kingdom. If you're not seeking his kingdom first, he said you're not even fit to be in it. Those are strong words. I don't want to see anybody here in this place ever get there. But I am telling you, you have an enemy of your soul, and that is his whole purpose right now. Right, right. Because he is ticked off, and he doesn't want us to see where we're going. He doesn't want to see you where you're going. Right. But we have fought too hard. We've endured too many trials and tribulations to be cheated at the precept Amen. of what Amen. God is about to break for us. So I'm holding up a brake check this morning. Everybody seeing the brakes? Amen. Yeah. And if everybody was honest right now in Jesus' name under the anointing of my voice, you would say, you know what? I've already seen some stuff in my heart, Pastor, and I'm going to start working on it. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Don't make me call you a liar under the anointing. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Amen? Amen. I feel the anointing. Amen. Glory. Next verse. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. Verse 26. Uh, we'll just go up to verse 24, I guess. He's talking about light and darkness and flesh. How many know you can only serve one master? Amen. So either you're seeking God's kingdom with all of your heart or you're lukewarm. And what does he do with lukewarm people? Yeah. We have a whole church in America that's full of lukewarm people. It's why we don't have revival. It's why we're not seeing souls saved. But I've made my mind and heart up. I'm not going to be lukewarm. Right. Do you know what? I can't even do nothing for you. I can present the gospel to you, but I can't make you have a shift. Right. And do you know what the gospel even goes on to say as I prayed about it? There comes a point where I've got to say, well, it's wheats and tares. I'll let it grow up together and let God deal with it. Do you think as pastor I want anybody to turn into a tear? Right. Sometimes I think that's spelled T E R R O R instead of T A R D. <laughs> Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Amen. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, not yet for your body, what you shall put on, it is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into the barns that your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Guess what? You sow and reap. How much more is he going to take care of you? Right. I don't have time. Well, I don't really feel like I'm called to do that. Well, I just want to show up and sit on a pew. Well, his kingdom was never called for pew sitters. Well, the same one that stays gets the same as all goes. Yes, not everybody is called to be on the front lines, but guess what? I'll, there has to be somebody sowing, feeding, equipping them, and doing all the work that's, that was left behind that they had to do when they went out. <coughs> There was never a place just to be 
Amen. Well, that's not what I'm called to do. Really. So you're going to tell the God of heaven and earth that until he does what you want him to do, you're not going to do nothing. Amen. Amen. Strong preaching, I know. But the truth is there's time for some things to break. Right. Each one of you has a destiny. The whole vision of this house is releasing people into their destiny. destiny. And most of you, I can actually tell you verbatim what it is. And me and the Lord's been working for a long time. But sometimes you, you know, I, I was a time, I, I've said it many times, I had to lay down my plans. When I laid down my plans, I didn't say, okay, I'll settle for this plan. I said, I have no plan. I have no idea. I'm even going to, I'm stopping to put any kind of demand on what it looks like. I'm just here. To build your kingdom. I was really happy just mowing the grass. I was really happy mopping the floors. Really. To this day, people think, uh, you know, I still would be, rather be up here this morning giving this kind of message. I'd be happy to be the guy taking care of all the stuff in the background. Let somebody else do this. But listen, we are in the precept of a phenomenal move of God. Amen. Yeah. Now some of you, you're wrestling with the Lord and you think I'm preaching at you. Well, you ain't never talked to me about it, so how could I be preaching at you? It's called the Holy Ghost. Come on. I want you to get there. Do you hear my heart? Yeah. But we have to seek first. To, the, and listen, the enemy, he's already, in the, in the last few weeks, he's already been stirring the pot and putting all kinds of stuff, lining it up. I came to squash it today, put a break check, and let's say, let's move into the promised land together. Amen. 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 Let's move 26, 26. Which one of you, taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Anybody been able to think yourself taller? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Paul thought himself happier, but you know, it's kind of under the anointing. But I, nobody's ever been able. You can't change the things that God has planned, but you can learn to grow in them. Right. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Do you know what? It is a scary place, to be honest, when you're growing in this level of faith. What do you mean I'm not supposed to worry about what I'm supposed to eat? Or my house? Have, Lord, have you not seen my bills? But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right, right. And all these things shall be added unto you. Right. If you'll to pay your tithes, pay your offerings. We don't teach about them every week because we're trying to get your money. I'm preaching about them because I got taken to the woodshed many years ago. And God said, you're blessed. Teach my people how to be blessed. Yeah. We do it after the offering. We don't beat on you. We give you the wisdom of God so that pray for you're starting to change your life. Right. I look around to it. Like I said, we're already a blessed church. We, we break every every norm, every every every. Uh, uh, one of the stupid you know, surveys or research things that they put out. We don't fit none of their categories. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow's cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye of little faith. Do you think that God can't, if God has plans for you, that he can't get them accomplished? The most person that you've got to spend your time working on is you, right? right? Now, like I said, there's there's gonna be times you're. Do you think he can't make time? You think he can't stretch your time, multiply your time? Do you know what you can tell people? Lots of people say they put God first, but you can look at their life and you can see what they put first very quickly. Just ask him. I can ask him a couple of questions, and I can 
I, I, and I'm not doing. I'm not judging them. Listen, I'm just saying. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. Fruit. Does that mean they don't have a love for God? No, but the Bible says that they that they love God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Right. They really don't put. You know, it, it, it takes faith to believe that God is going to stretch your time. That God, that if you seek to first the kingdom of God, that you're you are becoming His slave. You are becoming His servant. But you have to believe that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Right. That He's not some ogre up there just to to wrench you through this life like some slave. He's called you to rule and and reign as heirs with the King, co-heirs with Christ. You're a king's kid. But guess what? Princes have responsibilities. Yes. And they're not their own, just third to serve the kingdom. Right, right, right. Amen. You didn't get called to be a playboy. Right, amen. Give me all the money and let me flash it around, Lord. Glory. You got called, and that's how a lot of people treat the gospel anymore. You got called to be a prince, to reign, you got responsibilities to be a steward of the kingdom of God. Right, right. And the mysteries of God. Yeah. That's what we're called to be, amen? amen? Bring that glory to heaven, from heaven to earth. Woo! Show people, I just don't understand that. Well, let me show you another mystery. I mean, we've had gold dust showing up on our altar and stuff for years. We don't even talk about it no more. But you can always walk up here and find some. Could you imagine what God's going to do on the next precept? That's going to make people go, I wonder. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is what happens when the glory of God comes. I don't know. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. Are you starting to get excited? Are you starting to break through that veil? Do you get over the, you know, when the brake check first goes off, your heart goes up in your chest. Mm -hmm. I saw everybody here do it. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're moving on to the good stuff. Amen. Amen. He said, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Verse 31, or what shall we drink? Or where all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But what? Seek ye first. first. Now, here's the great news. He sought you first, and then he expects you to return the favor the rest of your life. He came to what? Seek and save the lost. Yes, amen. I'm so glad that he sought me out, that he sent people to love me. But guess what they were doing? They were being good princes of the kingdom, good ambassadors of Christ. Right. Right. I mean, oh, God wants you to help seek and save the lost. Yes. Yes. He wants you to help bring his kingdom from heaven to earth. Yes. Amen. But to think that you're going to get to do that any old way you want is beyond naive now. Mm. And we've been experiencing the goodness of God in this, this church for a very long time. But we're about to see something we've never seen. But God is asking us to sanctify ourselves to another level we've never had. Mm -hmm. no, are y'all hearing me this morning? Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Seek ye first the what? Kingdom of God and his righteousness. For some of you going, I don't know about that sanctify stuff. What's righteousness? Righteousness means sanctification. That means you act more like Jesus and less like yourself. You know, when the spirit of slap comes on, you're able to restrain it because it's greater if he that's within you than he that's within the world. You know, when you want to slap the taste out of their mouth, you go, glory! <laughs> Most of them. No, I, I'll stop getting that way, but I, you know, there's still things that bother you, but you know what? When you seek his righteousness, I'm probably never going to be completely, I'm never going to be completely holy this side of heaven. But it does not give me an obligation to stop seeking it first every day. Right. Every day I should be seeking to be right. more righteous than I was the day before. Amen. Amen. And as we do that, we choose to put his kingdom first. You cannot believe the things you can't even contain the things that he has for you upon this earth. Right, right. He is a rewarder of those that diligently what? Seek him. Put him first. Alright? So I'm asking you to start making a mental shift and asking yourself in everything you're doing, am I putting the kingdom 
with the honest person. Now, am I asking you to neglect your husband? I cannot be with you today. I am seeking God. <laughs> that is not what he said. Matter of fact, he said if you get married, it's going to be a little more complicated because you have to be able to serve them and what? Serve God. Yeah. But you still always serve God first, but you don't neglect serving God either. And notice the key word is serve. Yes, he called you to rule and reign as kings, but you know, he also sent you out as lambs and sheep among wolves. Amen. He didn't send you out as gorillas, beating your chest. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of gorillas anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he said, and all these things might be, could be, shall be added shall be. unto you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, shall be, shall shall be. <laughs> added unto me. Me, you, whichever you want to say. And uh, all of it is true. How many believe he wants to add some things to your life? Yes. Amen. But I believe he's wanting to make sure that, you know, not one person that had the old mindset was able to cross over Jordan. Right. I want to see everybody come with us. Right. I want us to get everybody rejoiced that we're about to go. And as we go through the months ahead of work and things just not being right, I want you to keep your hearts right so that we can get to this place that God has promised us we're going to. Right, man. Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. Service just ain't the same right now. Well, it probably won't be. This will probably be the last, most normal service we're going to have for a while. It's normal for us. <laughs> Feels weird in here with all this bare stuff in there. I ain't got no purple lights behind me. Nope. I just can't preach without the lights. <laughs> I can't wait to get up off this stool so Amen. Amen. Anyway, start running around. I got a whole new building to run in. I can make a latch around that one. Amen. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 Sufficient unto the day is the evil there. You're always going to have obstacles, but don't concentrate on the obstacles. Concentrate on seeking His kingdom this day. Amen. Amen. First Samuel chapter eight. Moving quickly. Anybody getting something out of this? Yes. You're starting to get. Mm -hmm. I feel the fire rising. Uh -huh. Amen. First Samuel eight verse seven and the Lord said unto Samuel hearken to the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee for they have not rejected thee but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them let me tell you you make a conscious choice every day who you're seeking. If you're not seeking his kingdom, you cannot serve two masters. We've read that, and you're choosing who's king in your life. Amen. And it usually goes Satan, it usually goes yourself, either it's God, yourself, or Satan, and yourself always leads you to Satan. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? And so you know, God, you know how many times I'm going to tell you as I've been heartbroken before God for people and praying, I've heard God gave me this verse many times. They didn't reject you, Pastor Brian. They rejected me. Just pray for them. As we're moving forward, then he's going to check some, he's going to tempt some of you. Maybe he already has been. But listen, don't reject the Lord. Right. You've got the break check up. Keep seeking. Make sure his kingdom's been purchased. Right. Is he going to ask a lot of us in the next season? Most definitely. 
but am I going to beat you or be overbearing? Absolutely not. Am I asking you to, you know, sign up for 100 hour days again? No, I am not. But I am also going to tell you straight up front right now, I'm going to know when you're blowing me smoke. And I, depending on what the Holy Spirit says at that time, because I don't never, well, if it's going to cause you most more damage, I'm more, I'm never still more concerned about what I'm putting into you than what I'm getting out of you. But if it's your soul on the line, I'm going to say, well, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You couldn't do that another time? Amen. But you know, well, I'm going to thank the Holy Spirit. Speaking about that, I'll give you a little more revelation. How many remember the story of the Good Samaritan? All those preachers walked by and had something better to do. They were doing God's work, but they left him sitting there, and the most heathen one was the one that came and helped him. Y'all remember the story? Yep. And uh, as a young minister, anytime I seen somebody in help, I felt like it was my duty to always help them. I'm not saying it's still not. But how many know that there's also plans of the enemy that can turn you? I was even late for a few revival meetings I was preaching because I ended up helping other people, and I thought it was okay. It ended up becoming a it ended up becoming a uh, hindrance to the things God was doing. How many know not every person that needs help are you supposed to help? Right. Well, how do you know? Because the voice of God speaks to you through the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. This morning we were on the way to church. There was a vehicle on the side it had flashers on and uh, I'll be honest I don't stop at every one of them because I believe you should listen to the Holy Spirit some of them are up to no good mm-hmm. and I believe you need to hear the voice of the Lord and there was a gentleman there and I stopped and asked him how he was doing he told me he was out of gas and if you don't know I mean I'm from the streets and sometimes that can just be a rude you know <laughs> and we stop there I'm not easily fooled and I said well I don't have a gas can and he said well I got a gas can I thought well this is this is not your average boy. So someone said, you're awful skeptical, Pastor. Well, boy, you've been pastoring all these years. Come on. Yeah. And so, and I heard the voice, but here's the thing. When I was driving, I saw that car. Instantly, the Spirit spoke to me, and he gave me the scripture of the Good Samaritan. So I stopped, and Pastor looked at me. And so I didn't have to wonder if I was supposed to. Mm-hmm. Why? I was already running late for service, and you all know what that does to me. <laughs> And I knew that there was a possibility I could even be late for this one. But I knew that I'd heard the voice of God. I knew that it was his plan. It was his kingdom. But that man was ready. That was about to have a divine appointment with God. And he did. I didn't go into that. But that was because I chose to follow God's plans. My plan was to get here on time. <laughs> Come on, are you here this morning? Now, I don't want everybody to say, you know, oh, my, my horse was in it. You know, I had to stop and help somebody because that's not what I'm saying. How do we do that? God judges the intentions of our heart. Amen. Amen. And here's the other thing. Moving forward in this, I felt the Lord say, you trust me with you. So don't want you, can't you trust me that I know what's really in your heart? Amen. And me and God ain't here to beat on you, but I want you to get what God wants for you. I want you to come. Amen. I want you to experience. And listen, there's going to be lots of people coming, and they're going to they're going to want to jibber jabber, gossip, do everything else. And you need to be ready to pour into them without them pouring into you. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory. Uh, so they didn't reject him there, and according to works that they have done since they. That day I brought them up out of Egypt even this day where they have forsaken me and served other gods so they do also unto me. Listen, when you choose not to serve the kingdom of God, <coughs> you may not want to admit it that you're, you're serving other gods. Anything that you put before God becomes an idol. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> and it's sin. Right. You can put family before God and become an idol. You can put, I've seen many people put ministries before God and become an idol. Listen, I, I've, seen, I've seen money. I've seen work. Listen, the thing is nothing comes before the kingdom of God. Right. Right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Matthew 6.10, it says, kingdom, My kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. How many want to see his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through 32 is where it says, if we judge ourselves, 
we won't be judged. If you don't want to end up in my office in the coming months, having a heart to heart, me staring across to you, I highly suggest that you keep this verse in your forefront because we have to protect what God is about to do. I, but I'm not willing, hear my heart, I'm not willing to do that at the risk of losing you. So I'm going to make, I, we're used, so, usually a lot of times, here with, with a lot of times I would uh, give you time to grow into that, right? I pray for you, let the Holy Spirit work on you. How many know you? that's happened with you a bunch? Yeah. During this season, I'm going to have to yank you up by your tail feathers and say, get, let's get back on it. But you know what's even better? If you do it, and I don't have to. <laughs> Why? Because God wants to pour out His blessing upon us. Come on, are you with me? It's the most exciting. We are on the precepts of greatness. You do not even fathom what God is about to do. People are going to come from all over to see what God is doing inside our church. I mean, I'm not just talking about in Springfield. I'm talking from all. There's about to be a move of God. Amen. Like you've never seen. Amen. And you're fighting for more than just your heart right now. You're fighting for souls that are on the line. Right. People that have not you've not even met yet. Right. Amen. The battle is bigger than you. Amen. So you're gonna have to get your eyes off you and your eyes back upon the Lord. Yes. Amen. I hope you're hearing Amen. my heart this morning. Amen. I, you know, I've had visions for years, and it's, it's, I believe we're on a precept of just God just blowing the socks off things. And we have to keep our hearts right. Yeah. I did a heart check, brake check on you this morning. Some things popped up. Don't sit there and use the spirit of reasoning to figure it out. Just give it to God and get your heart right. Yeah, man. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, what about this, God? I had this prophetic word over here. Well, if it didn't come to pass, it was probably a bunch of soulish nonsense. Put that back where it belongs and get back under the word of God. Right, right. Pastor Brian, you gave it to me. Well, it ain't come to pass yet. And it ain't your job to make it come to pass. So put it back on the shelf and wait for it to come to pass. Amen. Amen. And get your heart right. Amen. Amen. Can you all see why I wrestle with the Lord about this? This is a strong word this morning. I I, I know that it is. But I, I pray that you feel the love that it's given. Yeah, that's good. Yes. So this morning... As she sings that song, I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to pray. And I want to give you guys a few minutes alone. I can come up here and lay hands, but I believe this is something very personal. Yeah. And I want to give you time just to let's get our hearts right. And let's let the excitement that I know is right there permeate our spirits this morning. We're about to go. We will meet here. Wednesday night, uh, pray for us. We're closing at 11 o'clock Wednesday morning. And, uh, the new building is ours, paid in full. And then we start the uh, climb of bringing it up to Broken Chains Church and Taker. And there's more cleaning to do than most of you probably do in the 10 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing we have to do before we can do anything else is clean it so yes. we know what we actually yes. have. Yes. 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 All right. And so, but I'm still here to put into you, not get out of it. But please, let's just do it with the right heart. Amen. Sister Becky.